Are your doors banging on the wall and are your walls crying for help? Are you trying to save your wall and your doorknob? Then you come to the right place. Today we're going to crochet a doorknob cover which I said I would post it in a few days but it's been a month. I'm so sorry Deborah but the video is right here. For this the main stitches that we're going to be using are single crochet and slip stitch and single crochet in the third loop. I'm going to be using these beautiful DK weight yarn uh, for making the doorknob and I'm going to be using a 4mm crochet hook. You can use any hook and any yarn that you want. All you have to do is check your work against the doorknob. So if you are using a bigger size yarn, maybe you will only need three rows and then you will work your side. If you, uh, if you are using a smaller size yarn, maybe you will need to work a few extra yarn. So you can use any of the scrap yarn that you have lying around to start making this. I'm going to start by first taking the light color that I have. We're going to be making a magic ring first. To make the magic ring, hold the tail end of the yarn with your left hand and wrap the working yarn around your left hand like this. Now you can wrap it loosely so that you have to hold it with your left hand. Now using your right hand, uh, take your crochet hook and then insert it under the first loop, go under the first loop and then grab on to your second hook loop and then chain one so you're making this chain one so that uh, you are you're making this chain one to lock the stitch here now this is your magic ring okay we're going to be making six single crochets into the magic ring I'm going to make an extra chain so that the height gets adjusted easily one two, three, four, five, and six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. This is a chain one that we made in the beginning. Remember, chain one is not counted as a stitch here. We're not going to be making any stitches in the chain one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now slip stitch into the first stitch. But what we're going to do is, since I'm using two colors here, I'm not going to slip stitch using the light color. I'm going to grab on to my second color. And insert your hook into the first single crochet, pull up a loop and slip stitch with the new color. Okay, and you just tighten the ring and you can tighten the previous working yarn. Chain one, we're going to be making one two single crochets in each stitch one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and twelve that is the last stitch remember we're not going to be making any stitches in the slip stitch and the chain one now we're going to now we're going to slip stitch into the first stitch again leave the yarn that you are using pick up the first color and 
insert your hook into the first stitch and then slip stitch okay you can pull on the second color to tighten the stitch here chain one and from uh, in the third row we're going to be making a single crochet in the third loop so we're not usually we will just go into the loop like this but here we're going to flip our work back like this and can you see the loop here so this is one two and the loop behind here is the third one remember it is not the not these loops so these loops are the back legs of the front uh, single crochet we're not going to be working in this we're going to be working in this we're going to make one single crochet in the first stitch and then we're going to make two single crochets in the second stitch so the pattern repeat is make one single crochet in one stitch and two single crochets in the second stitch and you just repeat it so three stitches in total one two three four five six seven if you find it difficult to insert your hook what you can do is put the hook part first and then twist your hook and enter it like this so this makes it a little bit easier insert the hook first into the loop because it has the curve you can insert the curve in first and then the rest of the body uh, one two three oh how many did we make one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen <laughs> sorry uh, there you go twist it push it in 14 15 16 17 18 now drop the first color we're going to pick up the second color insert the hook into the first stitch yarn over and make a slip stitch you can just pull on the first color to tighten the loop here chain one and we're going to be making a uh, single crochets in the normal way here for this row we're going to start by making two single crochets in the first stitch and one single crochet in each of the next two stitches so two three four again one two one one four one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three four leave the second color pick up the first color insert your hook into the first stitch and make a slip knot sorry slip stitch 
chain one now again in this row we're going to be working in the third loop so what this does is it creates a texture here instead of being completely flat it brings the it makes the stitch three dimensional we're going to be making one single crochet in the first stitch two single crochets in the next stitch then one single crochet in each of the next three stitches one two three we're going to repeat this pattern again we're going to be making two single crochets in the next stitch and then one single crochet in each of the next three stitches one two three again one two three four five one two three four five one two three four five now we have three stitches left what we're going to do here is we're going to be making two single crochets in the next stitch and one single crochet in the next stitch and in the last single crochet uh, in the last stitch one single crochet okay this is the end of our uh, one two three four five fifth row we're going to drop our light color and pick up our dark color Put our crochet hook into the first stitch, grab the darker color and make a slip stitch. Pull the yarn to make it tight. Now in this row we are going to be making normal single crochets. Chain 1. We are going to be making 1 single crochet in each of the 4 stitches and then Two single crochets in the next in the next stitch so one two three four five six so the repeat is six stitches let's do it one two three four five six one two three four five six one two three four five six one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three four five six 
the next stitch is the slip stitch and chain one we're not going to be working in that we're going to drop our second color and now i'm going to pick up my first color insert the crochet hook into the first stitch and pull up a loop and slip stitch okay in the next stitch uh, in the next row we're going to be working again in the third loop this size is perfect for my doorknob so I'm not going to be making any more increases if you want to do if you want to make increase in the next uh, if you want to increase in the next row I'm going to put up instructions in the description box but uh, my pattern is not going to be increased here I have a standard sized doorknob and this will fit perfectly there and I'm also not going to be changing colors anymore i just want uh, i'm going to keep the sides solid color and this is just going to be the front so what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut my yarn here and we're going to be continuing only in the first color that we used what you can do is you can alternate and you can even alternate the same pattern throughout till we reach the end that is you can make one row in normal and one row in the third loop and this whole textured pattern is going to come for the whole sides also but i'm not going to do that i'm just going to make normal single crochets from here on out so that is i'm going to be making in the next row i will make the single crochet in the third row and from that i'm going to be making just normal single crochets so because i don't want uh, the I don't want the pattern, I don't want this 3D texture to the sides. I just want it normal and just keep the front of it special. Okay, let's continue to the next row. We're just going to be making one single crochet in each stitch. So what this does is it will start folding backwards and you're going to, this part is going to stay flat, chain one and remember third loop so one two and three okay i think this is a little bit tight let me just twist it around one remember we're just going to be making one single crochet in each stitch one two three four Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11 and let's complete our row and then we'll meet and we are at the last 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 stitch mm, yeah the last stitch can sometimes be troublesome but there you go and then slip stitch into the first stitch chain one and from here on out we're just going to be making uh, one single crochet in each stitch and we're just going to do it in the normal way uh, you could also Instead of you doing yarn over, you can also do yarn under to create this kind of X pattern. And that will look great in the side. So I think we're, I'm going to just do that. Chain one. Insert your hook into the first stitch. And instead of going yarn over, go under pull up the loop 
and then close it yarn under so yarn under means the hook is up and the yarn is under this is yarn over this is yarn under your hook is up the yarn is under you just grab onto the yarn and pull up a loop and then Finish it just like you finish your single crochet. What it does is it creates this uh, kind of X pattern here. Yarn under, can under, pull, close, under, pull, close. We're just going to be uh, single crocheting in a round. If you want, you can. Uh, after you finish this row you can slip stitch it here and then chain one and continue or you can just uh, continue in rounds till you have the height that you need i'm going to do that and then we will meet back up i've made six uh, seven rounds and for the last round we're going to make one single crochet chain one Keep one stitch and single crochet in the next stitch. Chain one, skip one stitch, single crochet in the next stitch. So we're going to be making holes like this so that we can easily weave in the thread at the end that we need to close it. Okay, let's finish this round and our door knob will be ready chain one and then slip stitch to the first stitch let us snip it off pull it out and then we will just weave in the end at the back you can you can leave a long tail and then use a darning needle and then weave in the ends but I usually just use my crochet hook and I just put my crochet hook into the back bumps into the third loop that we made actually so we just put it in the back bumps and then I weave in the end and to make it more secure I just go back and forth in the same stitch so that it just stays in place Let's go in to this bump and then pull it out from here and okay I think this is enough our next step is to cut a long piece of yarn let's say about six or seven inches what we're going to do is we're going to thread it in so we're going to weave it in so ideally you will use your darning needle you will uh, put one end in your darning needle and then you will go in where you made the chain one space and then bring it back in and go out and in and throughout I cannot find my darning needle so I'm just going to use my crochet hook this is a chain one space let us pull the crochet thread out I'm just going to leave this here in the next chain one space where is it here and then pull it out for the first few you're going to hold on to the tail end because you don't want that to come out too and just weave it 
in and out in and out all through your stitches until you reach front and the last one out okay so this is extra here we can snip it off later but what we're going to do is we're going to put it on our uh, door knob and then we're going to pull the ends to tighten it here and then you can just make a normal knot and then snip out the ends or you can just tuck in the ends inside this so that uh, it will be easy to remove and then once you wash it you can just use the same uh, you can just use the same thread and tie it up again okay let's do that I'm just going to put it on my door knob pull the ends so that it's nice and tight and then just make a normal knot and a bow tie and okay well then it's too big I'm going to cut off this extra and just tuck it inside and there you go this is the final look this is how it looks in the side this is the front view of it this is how it looks to the side and you can just tuck it inside or you can just roll it down and have your bow at your bottom that will look like a part of design too